In this video, we're going to go over the basics of adding a form using gra the Gravity Forms plugin on a WordPress website. Uh, this is geared toward creating uh, intake forms uh, and any sort of forms that allow you to scale your business uh, upwards. In other words, uh, anything that you typically take time to do repetitively. Uh, if you get the question, you know, do you do X and how much does it cost all the time? you can create forms to kind of funnel people that ask you these questions to answer a few qualifying questions first and kind of get in the uh, the funnel, if you will, for getting service and getting support without you having to manually respond to everything all the time. This is really useful for um, questionnaires, general question forms, including a form with your uh, sales process when you're selling a service so they automatically get this uh, and fill the you know answer questions before you actually have to get on the phone or log onto their computer or you know get their situation. It's also really good for feedback forms. So again, we're using Gravity Forms on a WordPress website. This is a development site that's pretty much been cleared out of all data. We're going to create a um, simple questionnaire form so you can see the steps, uh, and I'm going to walk you through how to add a few elements such as um, a default email response when someone fills out a form. All right, so first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to jump over to forms. <clears throat> I'm going to create a new form. Form title I'm going to just create is, uh, we'll do intake. Again, you can use this for a lot of different stuff. First things that are really basic that you usually want to ask are name and email. So these are under advanced fields on Gravity Forms. Name email. They show up here on the left here. I don't really need to edit or mess around with these at all. Uh, next thing <clears throat> I want to jump to, say for this intake form, I want to, uh, I'm going to make up a scenario. Say it's, uh, I am a coach of some sort and I deal with, um, you know, mental breakthroughs. And I believe one of the things that really helps you in the beginning is to uh, you know, learn more about where you came from. And I always ask that in all my interviews and all my startups that I talk with people. <clears throat> so, um, you know, for example, I'm going to create a field with a drop down and it's going to ask, where are you from? So over here under standard fields, I click to drop down. Where are you from? I'm just going to fill in some dummy answers here. Earth. Mars, Venus, okay, ask them how do they feel, <clears throat> and this is just a single line of text, I'm going to make this required, all right, and I'll drag this down here. So now we ask them, where are you from? How do they feel? Looks like an extra list item got in here. Get rid of that. I think I clicked that accidentally when I meant to hit email. So I'm going to go advanced fields and go back to email. So now we can get that in here. Name, email, where are you from? How do you feel? Create your intake form process. Hit update form. So now that form is created, it's not installed into a page or a post or anywhere yet, it's just created, it, it exists. So now what we want to do is go to pages. I have a page here already just called intake form questionnaire. It's a normal WordPress page. There's nothing on it. We're going to view this page real quick so you can see. Nothing on it. <clears throat> Sorry, you can ignore these uh, sidebar items. This was uh, cleaned out from a former website. So what we do here to install the form using Gravity Forms is we click this Add Form button. Select a form. We have a few different forms here. The one I just created is called Intake. So I select that. I typically remove the title and the description. So I can create a title uh, you know, above the embedded form if I want. Insert form. Puts in this little code here. I'm just going to add, switch over to visual, move it down and add 
form, intake form. Make that bold just so it gives it kind of a title before the form here. And hit update. This is the very simplest version of what happens how and how to create a intake form. So if I come back to my page and I refresh it, it's now embedded in my site. I have name, email, where are you from, how do you feel. It's live. It's ready to go. Now, the there's a lot you can do with Gravity Forms. You can create this so when they hit submit, it sends them to PayPal to pay you. Uh, so this questionnaire becomes part of your payment process. Uh, you can customize uh, emails that go back to users um, based on what they put in their email. Now that's usually one of the most standard features is to send someone some materials or say, great, I'll follow up with you in two days or um, you know, thanks for this information, now go to these links um, to prepare for our call or service or something like that. So that's the next thing that we're going to do here is we're going to run through quickly how to create um, an email, which in Gravity Forms they call notifications. So I'm going to jump to back to the back end here. I'm going to go back to Forms. <clears throat> and under our intake form here, we have settings, we have notifications. So if I click notifications here, there's already a default admin notification. So that usually is the default email that gets sent to the owner of the website when a form is submitted. You can remove that or you can customize it so the from subject is you know exactly what you want so it comes to your inbox and you know a new form was submitted and what it was called and the details. What we're going to focus on right now is sending a notification or email to the person who filled out the form. So I'm in my intake form here. I want to add a new notification. I give it a name. This name is just for our identification in the back end. So this will be the user's email. It says send to, and you don't want to type in the person's name. So what you do is you click select field. It gives you the fields of the form you created. Since we have an email field, we want to select that. The from name typically you can create, you can make this your website, but typically I, you know, I put in my name so they recognize me. They're usually contacting, uh, you know, a person on a site. You can put the from email here. You can, if you leave admin email, it's going to take whatever's set up as the administrator's email for the website. I usually customize this as well so they can hit reply and it'll come right back to me and I know what it is. Customize the subject. In this case, since we were asking, it was an intake form and I was asking some general questions, I'll say thanks for your responses. <clears throat> Read this. Then you can add your message here. Thanks for the info. I'll you know, provide your detailed report within two days. Hit hit reply for any questions. Rob. Now I can hit save notification. So now I have two notifications set up. So if I go back to notifications for this form, I have an admin notification that will let me know a form got filled out. And I have a user email or user notification uh, that will send them a message when they fill it out. Now that's really, really critical because if you want some the user to take some actions before you actually have to do anything right now, so far a user has filled out a form, you get an email, they get an email. If you want them to take additional actions as part of your service before you even have to touch it or do anything, uh, you want to create that form to have those instructions in it. So maybe you send them a link to a scheduler service that you use, uh, maybe you send them to videos or something to prep them for um, you know, whatever is going to happen next. The point is getting the work out of your hands so you don't have to manually do everything and exchange several emails or um, you know, dig into their situation. You want to ask as many questions as you need to perform a service and then lead them to the right channels so that performing whatever you need to do becomes as frictionless as possible and relieves you from having to do a lot of manual work. This is going to allow you to scale your time, take on you know, more requests while doing less. All right, so that's uh, how to use Google or Gravity Forms on a WordPress website and some ways to free up your time so you can scale better in your business.